Morning YouTube, uh, this is Chuck Gentles and I'm doing this video today because unless you're really young or really new, you know that gold mining is hard. I mean it gets harder as you get older but this everyday grind, if you spend between five and ten days out on a claim digging, you're exhausted when you come home. So this uh, video is to show you just uh, a couple ideas I I've used over the years that uh, will really help you. The one is what you're looking at right now, is Dawn dish soap. Now this is a, a fancy one that we have, but it was on sale, so this is the one we got. And what we use this for is like, uh, if you look here at this hose, the fittings, a lot of times these fittings are really hard uh, after your hose shrinks a little bit to replace a fitting. So we coat the, the end of the, the fitting and the hose with a little bit of Dawn soap and they slide right on and Dawn won't hurt your, uh, your, your gold finding ability. It won't float the gold actually. It will make your gold actually, if it's flower gold, it will make it drop out. Uh, the other thing we use it for is here, and I'll show you this in a little bit, just not right now, is foot valves. When you go to put a foot valve on, I don't know about yours, but this is a Keen P180 and it's a two and a half in and a two out. So my hose is two and a half and it's really, really tight and it just usually doesn't want to go on. So we coat the inside of the hose and again the fitting on the pump and that helps it to uh, slide on then you can put your clamp on and, and, and go. This, you know, it just makes things just a little bit easier. The third thing you can use Dawn for is if, heaven forbid, you're on a BLM or Forest Service claim and you accidentally spill some gasoline. And I don't know if you've seen it, but it puts a rainbow on the water and you can smell it forever. Two squirts of Dawn in the water, turn it up a little bit, it breaks that down, it floats it away. Uh, that's what they use to clean the ducks up when the oil spill that they had years ago. It was Dawn soap. And uh, so that helps it and helps keep you out of trouble uh, with the smell and uh, that rainbow floating on the water. So the other thing is, uh, I'm going to start off with the foot valve. This is my foot valve. It's, like I said, it's a two and a half. Uh, something we always do because a lot of times after you haven't run for a while, your foot valve uh, has trouble keeping prime. And uh, what we do, anytime we store our foot valve, it's stored on in like this. And it keeps the foot valve up against the seat. So, you know, just, just store it vertically and lean it up against the wall and just store it like that. The other thing we do to keep it so it's working better is we mark the hinge side of the uh, flap on the inside. So you always know which is the up end, and even like, uh, depending on where you're at, your hose may lay a little bit different than it is here. Mine just happens to be naturally bent this way, but it just so happens if it, if it was this way, I loosen the clamp, turn the foot valve, but my flap is still going to be in the right spot. So that's that part. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to put this foot valve on here in just a second. Let me get it set up for you. Okay, I'll show you how easy this is to do now. Uh, this foot valve hasn't been on since uh, February. So all it takes here is a little bit of Dawn soap on your fingers, like so. You don't dump it on the floor like I just did, but things happen. But if it goes in the water, you're, you're safe. So you just coat the inside of the hose a little bit, grab your hose, and just do that. And it's on. It's that easy to put that hose on and make it stink. Now you put your clamp on and you're done. So that's how easy it is, and that's the things with the foot valve that will keep your life a little bit simple. So while we're on the, the pump, um, let me back this out just a touch here. 
something I always do on every pump I've ever had, and it's really saved my pumps and made things really easy for me, is I use synthetic oil. I use a 1030 synthetic, full synthetic, not a blend. It makes the motor start really easy no matter what the temperature. And if you happen to not pay attention to your oil and you don't have an oil safety switch, uh, it'll keep that motor running for you and, and make it run really well and, and save you from maybe seizing a motor. So synthetic oil is a, is a big deal. Next thing is priming that foot valve. You know, there's many ways to do it. Uh, there are people who use, actually use an electric pump and pump in the, knob, in the, in the output of the pump here and fill it, fill it up. And they've got a hand pump that's a two-way pump. You pull the handle back and forth and it'll pump. We don't do that. Uh, well, well, the worst one is this one, where you take the hose and you pump it in the water. You pump it back and forth like this till it fills up with water and gets water in the pump. By the time you're done, you don't care if you dredge or not, or high bank. What we do is, is much simpler. This is an ABS fitting. It's a sanitary Y. It's two inch for the pump, an inch and a half out. It's an inch and a half male. And it's two inch uh, on the top with a two inch plug. So all you do with this, I think this will clear that leg, let me see. So I won't tighten it all the way. So there's, there it is. And what you do is you take a bucket, pull this plug, Now your foot valve's in the water, right here. You dip your bucket down right here and you fill this up with water till you can see the bubble coming up in here until it gets in the pump, get a little bit more till this overflows. And guess what? You're prime. Always do it with the hose, your inch and a half hose on here so you don't have uh, air forcing back into it. And that, that is so easy and so quick and so cheap. I think I made that fitting for I think it might have been eight bucks at, at Home Depot. All the parts were there. So that, it, that's a real good tip, and it saves you just tons and tons and tons of, of effort. All right, the next thing that gets to be a little, it's not real hard, but after you've been dredging for uh, three or four or five days or longer, uh, and you have a full five and trying to pour it in the cap on the, on the pump, uh, that five is really, really heavy. And I found these, I believe this was on Amazon, and this is a pump, an electric pump. Uh, it takes two C's or two D's, I'm not sure. Uh, it goes in the gas can, it goes inside your can here. You know, pull the lid, get the lid off. It goes in like so, it fits. This comes out, goes in your your motor, and you turn on the switch and you pump gas. And again, it's it's not any big giant thing, but you know you want to save as much energy as you can. You you're saving energy to, to dredge, not because you know everything is just too hard for you. It's this is just a really simple thing and. I say I think this was Amazon, and I'm pretty sure this was like I don't want to say twelve or fourteen dollars or something like that. But it's a real time saver, and again, it really prevents having that gas bill we just talked about with the Dawn dish soap. If uh, and they see you using uh, fueling like that, uh, usually the Forest Service Beyond just leave you alone. Okay, this next tip is. Tip is for anybody uh, who high banks or do what we call in Arizona dry hole dredging. Uh, in California, I believe they call it uh, whisk banging or they call it uh, booming. Uh, there's several names for what it's called. Uh, some people just call it hydraulic hanging, which is uh, not a good name, and it's, people look down on that, but that isn't what we do. So, what we have here again is real similar to. 
the other sanitary Y. This is, again, a sanitary Y, uh, only it's inch and a half female, inch and a half male, inch and a half male. So what we do with this, we run a hose off of this fitting here to this Y. And then from the Y, we take the straight piece and go to a suction nozzle. This would be the hose going to the suction nozzle. Uh, and then we take the angle part of the Y. Are you seeing that? Yeah, just barely, huh? We take the angle part of that Y and hook another inch and a half hose to it. There, these are inch and a half, inch and a half, and we go to the spray bar. Uh, I've experimented with spray bars over the years, and uh, there, there's many different lash ups you can use. This one just happens to be what I've ended up with. Got you a little too close there. So what we got here. Uh, this is all galvanized pipe. It can be whatever you want. I just use galvanized because that's kind of what I had. Two inch close pit pipe nipple, uh, 45 inch and a half, four, uh, inch and a half, inch and a half. Another close inch and a half nipple to an inch and a half. I'd like to go to an inch and a half to half, but I didn't have any at the time, so it goes inch and a half to one and one to a half. This is just a little six inch, half inch nipple, six inch ball valve, and this is just a little two inch, half inch nipple. Two inch in length. And that is your spray, so when you want to work cracks, you just do this, and you're splitting the water coming off the pump. And the reason we split it out here is some people try to use the system and split it right at the pump. And if you do that, I mean, it's doable, but if you do that, what happens here is from that point right there on your fill, if you put this other Y here, then both of these hoses coming off of here have to be long enough to make it to wherever you're dredging. And we dredge, sometimes we dredge uh, 30, 40 feet from the creek. So if I do it this way and put the Y out away from there and put a, say, a 20-foot hose on that right there and then come out here to the Y with that 20-footer, then I can go another 20 feet with the spray, another 20 feet with the, with the spray bar, and we'll be uh, like 40 feet from the creek. And, we, believe it or not, we've actually done that. And the only downside to that is when you're that far from the creek and you shut down, all the water from your hose drains back and puts pressure on your pump. And a lot of times you have to take the pressure off the pump, let some water out so you can even start because it'll, it'll hydraulic lock the pump. But this uh, a YouTube friend of mine uh, had a question about this. And he was going to come off the... Uh, the fitting on the pump, a keen pump has a, uh, see I can show you, they've got a hose fitting right there. And I've used that, uh, did a little spray nozzle off of that with a garden hose, that's a garden hose fitting. And we were up on Turkey Creek mining and there was a crack and a guy had been washing that up with his, his uh, garden hose connection like that. And the guys that we were with there went back in that same crack with the, the setup I'm talking about here. All of this with this spray bar. Now I'm, I'm pushing an inch and a half uh, hose through and water through it versus a garden hose. And they popped out a, it was close to, uh, I think it was three eighths of an ounce nugget about the size of a thumbnail out of the same crack the guy had been working. So that's why we don't use that, that fitting on the pump and why we do this. It's just better set up. And uh, the guy that asked me, this is a YouTube friend. His name is Pirate Dredger and he's from Scotland. Really nice guy. And I, Pirate, I hope this really helps you. And uh, 
gives you some ideas that will save you some effort and uh, make you find lots of gold. So if you all like this video, go to thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.